prevention methods like condoms, voluntary medical male circumcision, and oral anti-HIV medicine. And we're going to have to invent new and better preventative solutions like medicines you only have to take once a month or an effective vaccine. If we don't act both on today's treatment and to create these tools, the Harding harder gains made against HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa over the last 15 years could actually be reversed. Because of the population growth, just doing what we are today is not enough. We need to do more. Nutrition is another critical area of focus for Africa. Nearly one-third of the continent's children suffer from malnutrition that stunts their growth and robs them of their physical and cognitive potential. Millions more suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. These are impacts that last a lifetime and impact whole generations of African youth. African Development Bank President Akin Adesina put it best when he said recently that the greatest contributor to Africa's economic growth is not physical infrastructure, but gray matter infrastructure, people's brain power. The best way to build that infrastructure includes proper nutrition. Without eliminating malnutrition, we won't get the great potential that's there. We know that when mothers and infants get uh, good nutrition, that breastfeeding is a key part of that. We know that certain vitamins and minerals are essential for children. We have a number of ways to intervene to help nutrition. Uh, things like fortified cooking oil, uh, sugar fortified with vitamin A, and sugar and flour enriched with R and zinc and vitamin B. One of the most exciting advances is the breeding of crops, so there are mo they are naturally more nutritious. For example, when adolescents eat high iron pearl millet, their likelihood of iron deficiency is reduced sixfold. And just half a cup of biofortified orange sweet potato is all it takes to meet a child's daily vitamin A needs. The toll of micronutrient deficiency is huge, but the costs of fighting it are not. Recent estimates done in Nigeria and Uganda indicate that every dollar invest, invested to reduce stunting returns $17 in greater earning capacity in the workplace. When children's bodies and brains are healthy, the next step is an education that helps them develop the knowledge and skills to become productive contributors to society. Improving education is hard work. I've learned this firsthand through our foundation's efforts to create better learning outcomes for primary, secondary, and university students in the United States. But this hard work is incredibly important. A good education is the best lever we have for giving every young person a chance to make the, the most of their lives. In Africa, as in the United States, we need new thinking and new educational tools to make sure that a high-quality education is available to every child. In Uganda, young innovators at the NGO called Educate are helping high schools prepare young people for the workplace by teaching students how to start their own business. And with a high level of mobile phone penetration in Africa, technology using mobile phones to connect to the Internet have the potential to help students build foundational skills while giving teachers better feedback and support. Globally, the educational technology sector is innovating and growing rapidly, and it's exciting to see new models and, and tools emerging to meet the needs of educators and students who are not connected to current systems. At the university level, we need not only to broaden access, we have to also ensure that we have high quality public universities that will launch the next generation of scientists, entrepreneurs, educators, and government leaders.
South Africa is blessed with some of the best universities in Africa, like the one we're at today. For our foundation, we partner with these universities to do our, our work in health and agricultural research. Maintaining the quality of this country's higher education system while expanding access to more students will not be easy, but it is critical to South Africa's future. Other countries in the region will do well to follow South Africa's example and provide the highest level university education to the largest number of qualified students. Healthy, educated young people are eager to make their way in the world, but Africa's youth must have economic opportunity to channel their energy into progress. Some of those youths will work in agriculture, where still over half of the workforce uh, toils today. We need advances uh, to make agriculture far more productive. Today, the seeds that are used are unproductive, uh, the soils are not very good, and so many farmers grow just enough to feed their family. With climate change leading to more severe weather, doing more of the same will not be good enough. The key to this is a series of innovation at every step along the way from farm to market. First, farmers need better tools to avoid disasters and grow a surplus, things like seeds that can tolerate drought, floods, pest, and disease, affordable fertilizers that have the right mix of nutrients to replenish the soil, and easy to administer livestock vaccines that can help prevent flocks and herds from being wiped out. Next, market, farmers need to be connected to market where they can buy these inputs at a good price and sell their surplus and earn a profit that they can invest not only in their family's basic needs, but also back into the farm. This in turn will provide employment opportunities both on and off the farm as more prosperous farmers begin to support a range of agro-businesses like sea dealers, trucking companies, and processing plants. I recently met with a group of young crop breeders, one from Ethiopia, one from Kenya, one from Nigeria, one from Uganda. I really love the talking about the science of plant productivity. And in this case, I was amazed at the expertise all of these scientists brought to their work on cassava, a staple crop that provides more than one third of the calories in many African diets. Some had ways of improving the nutritional content of cassava. Others were breeding a variety that can resist both of the devastating diseases that are threatening to wipe out the cassava crop. Our foundation is also working with a young computer scientist from Macquarie University who designed a mobile phone app that lets farmers upload a picture of their cassava plants to find out whether it's infected or not. These are examples of the kind of innovators who can drive an agricultural transformation across the continent if they have the support they need. For many decades, agriculture has suffered from dramatic underinvestment. Many governments didn't see the link between their farmers and economic growth. Now, however, this misconception is gone, and through the comprehensive African Agricultural Development Program, countries have a framework for transforming agriculture. The investment needs to follow so that young Africans have the means to create the thriving agriculture they envision. With Africa's farms as a base, the next step in economic growth is to promote job creation in other sectors. Doing this will require investment in infrastructure, including energy. Seven in 10 Africans lacks access to power, which makes it harder to do everything. Harder to get health care in a dark clinic. Harder to learn in school when it's boiling hot. Harder to be productive when you can't use labor-saving machinery. Ultimately, a shortage of power, like many African countries, including South Africa, have experienced, is also a drag on economic growth. Businesses will not invest fully in places where they can't operate efficiently. 
A recent report projected that 500 million Africans won't have electricity even in 2040. We need to change that. What Africa needs is what the whole world needs, an energy advance that provides cheap, clean energy for everyone. You're watching the live broadcast of the uh, 14th edition of the Nelson Mandela lecture in South Africa, Pretoria, and that's the guest speaker the co-founder of the Melinda Bill Gates Foundation and we will have to uh, go back to a normal broadcast now as we enjoined our orders from our other platforms to continue watching this very important broadcast from South Africa. Coming up next is Moment of Truth. This has been a live channels television event.